explaining that you are from Colombia and and I did my PhD here in Chile. In Chile. Uh, also, also I did some parts of my PhD in Germany. In Germany. Uh, and in a little in a little country near Russia called Estonia. Estonia. So he studied in Germany and Estonia in Europe. Very nice. Exactly. Um, and my PhD is in ecology and evolution. So I am ecologist and an evolutionary biologist. Um, ecology and evolution. And uh, I, I work mainly in Patagonia, in Patagonian forests. Wow, well, Patagonia is in the south of Chile and Argentina. Exactly, yeah. Um, I work in several topics. I work uh, mainly in mycorrhizal fungi, uh, meaning the association between uh, the roots of the plant, of most of the, of the terrestrial plants, and, and a fungus. Or a mushroom. mushroom. Uh, so this is a symbiotic association, crucial for 92% of all the plants. Um, and I study this association uh, in topics as uh, ecosystem ecology, as uh, agronomy, uh, as soil science in general. Um, and right now I am doing a postdoctoral uh, fellowship uh, in Catholic University here in Santiago um, with fire ecology because here we have a lot of fire, especially on this time. So we want to look how to restore soil uh, with this fungi. Uh, after fire. Very good. Okay, let me tell my students some of what you have told me. So he works with evolution and ecology. So I right? And his research was in Patagonia. Can you see Patagonia there in the back? You go to Argentina. The fungus and the plants, the plants, roots or trees, roots. You can put the plant that you see, you can have it. The fungus and the plants, 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 Okay, very much, very good. So can we can we ask the first question or do you have anything else to say before that? No, I go ahead. Okay. Good night. Hello. Hello. My name is Bogna. Okay. Uh, How old are you? Uh, uh, I am I am twelve. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen years old. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, what is the most interesting part of being? Of being, of being in ecology. The most interesting part of being an ecologist. Yes. yes. Uh, this is a very good question. Um, I think that ecology is a, a very complex uh, thing to study. It's very complicated. 
and I like that. I like that is uh, challenging. That is uh, that you have to know a lot of mathematics, but also to have a lot of uh, logic uh, to develop new uh, theories and to and to study patterns and process in in nature. So I like I like that that ecology is is this complex and this challenge always uh, my mind yeah. very good he said that ecology is very complicated very complex right and it's challenging this is a very challenging very challenging and that it involves, involves math, mathematics math and logic logic and mathematics but you know e que aborda a questão dos padrões da natureza dos nossos patterns. Uma palavra que repete muito quando a gente fala de science is patterns, padrões da natureza. Very good. Thank you very much, Cesar. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Cesar, can you just change the position of your cell phone to see if the camera is better? Oh, much better. Thank you. Hello. Hello. My name is Mel. Uh, I am 11 years old. Okay. Why do you want to be an ecologist? Size me. Since. Uh, since. You good? Child. Uh, child. Uh, can you repeat? I, I didn't understand. Did you want? Uh, okay. Did you, no. Did, did you want to be an ecologist since science? Child. Ah, uh, you are asking if I wanted to be an ecologist since childhood. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I wanted to be, in general, my... my undergrad study is uh, my undergrad degree degree is in biology i am a biologist wow. and then and then i did my phd in ecology and evolution so yes since i was uh, I, i think that since i was 13 or 14 years old uh, i wanted to be a biologist uh, because in colombia as in brazil uh, we have many great uh, forests and many great places to, to to go to the sea for example and see sea mammals uh, and see the amazon uh, basin I, i i was lucky enough to to see this since i was a child so all this exposure to, to nature since i was very young uh, uh, incentivized me to to study biology yeah Very nice. Okay, thank you. Biology. And since he was 13, 14, he wanted to be a biologist. How old are you? 13? 11? 13? 14? So he was about your age when he started studying biology because of the forest. Remember forest? Colombia and Brazil. And remember that two years ago, I think two years ago, we watched a video about the Paramount. You remember the Paramount? Colombian forest. Uh, we have we had the chance to see an interview with uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember the name of the person two years ago about the Paramo. Is the Paramo a kind mm -hmm. of forest in Colombia? Yes, this is, this grows uh, high in the Andes, uh, like three three thousand and three hundred meters above the sea level. Yes. And it uh, has a special kind of plant. The, Santa I don't remember the name. 
yeah, the plant in, in Spanish is frailejón. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Very good. So let's see the next question. Hello. Hello. My name is Isabel. I'm 13 years old. Isabel. Okay. My question is how many hours do you work a day? Oh, uh, I don't have a regular uh, schedule. I, I don't work from nine to five as a normal job. Uh, for example, today I am at home and I am more or less uh, relaxed, but I was in the laboratory on Saturday. So I, I, I don't have a regular schedule, to be honest. I, I, I just work a lot. <laughs> uh, but for example, today, because I had this call and, and several other calls by Skype, it's, it's better to work from home. Um, so I will say that more, more than 10, more than 12, more than 12 hours a day, usually. Wow, more than 12 hours a day. Works. It's very hard to work. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now let's get into Paola. Hello. Hello. My name is Paola. I am okay, 12 years old. Paola, okay. Uh, have you ever found any fossils in the soil? What about gems? Have I found what? Any fossils? Yes. Uh, no, I, I don't study fossils. I know some people that have found fossils in the south of Chile, in some islands called Chiloe. Uh, and I have uh, gone with them, but for me it's more like recre recreation, for them is work. Uh, but I, I don't study fossils in particular, but in these islands in the south of Chile, there are little um, crustacean, crustacean fossils, very, very small fossils. And these islands have almost no people living there because in the south of Chile is very, is very difficult, very cold. So, so there I have seen some fossils, but uh, not because I was looking for them. Yeah. And gems? Uh, no, no, also gems, no, I, I don't study this. Yeah. Thank you. So when he says fossils, it's like recreation, right? Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Melissa. I am um, 13 years old. And my question is, uh, what types of interesting elements have you found in the soil? Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, what type of interesting elements. elements have you found in the soil? Interest uh, elements have I found in the soil. Like elements of the of the chemical elements. Do you do you mean chemical elements like phosphorus yes. and nitrogen? And and sort of even objects, things. Have you ever ah. uh, been studying the soil, like to find new things? But you are not paleontologist, of course. But have you? Uh, yes, I will say that. Uh, for example, some structures of Araucaria, that is a very old tree that is also present in the south of Brazil. Uh, it's, it's a different species but the same genus. Uh, you have like this very uh, like born with fire uh, root, root of the, of the Araucaria tree 
and this root grows, uh, doesn't go deep, but goes in the sides, in the sides, uh, in an horizontal way. So you have Araucaria there uh, in Florianopolis, and we have Araucaria uh, in the south, in the south of Chile. And these roots, uh, I, once I found these roots, uh, once having like 1,000 years old, so very, very old roots, I, I found these roots digging in the soil. So yeah, that, that can be, yeah. And also, and also some, some animals, some little roedents that I was not looking for, but when you dig a hole in the soil, sometimes you found, uh, I would say, uh, nice looking uh, roedents, uh, that are not like the common rat, but very, very small uh, rodents, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's like a Hello. Hello. My name is Pedro. Pedro. Yeah. I am 42 years old. Mm -hmm. My question is: Does the moon have an influence in the soil? Uh, can you repeat the question? Does the moon have an influence in the soil? Mm, no, I, I, I cannot understand. I'm sorry. The question is, is it if the, ah. moon, the moon have any? Does the moon have any influence in the soil? Uh, oh, this is a good question. Um, the moon, I, I, I think that in coastal areas, there is an indirect effect of the moon because of, of the effect of the moon in the sea, in, in, the, in the ocean. But it's just an indirect effect. It's not directly the moon affecting the soil, but the moon affecting the, the sea and the sea affecting the soil uh, surrounding the coastal areas. So that's, yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My question is Why did you choose this career? Uh, why did I choose my career? Ooh. Well, part of the answer is because since I was very young, I was very interested in going to the forest and going to the Paramo and going to the sea. Uh, but also, I like the, the freedom that we have in a new university. I can basically manage my own schedule and I can travel a lot. I, I, if, if I am good at my work, I can travel a lot to a lot of countries and to a lot of uh, natural uh, ecosystems um, and I can develop my own ideas so I really like this I don't have to follow someone else I am my own boss and I also I am not a scientist because I want to be rich that's not the case uh, I, I want to have a good life, but not not being rich. Uh, it's just doing something that generates me a lot of, a lot of passion and, and, and I, that I like a lot. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, so he has some good reasons to choose this career, especially traveling. I love traveling. Do you like traveling to different countries? So as a 
my question is uh, uh, which ecosystem do you prefer? Which which ecosystem do you prefer? Do you have a favorite ecosystem? Ah, if I have a favorite ecosystem. Oh, this is also a, a good question. Uh, yes, I really like Patagonian forests. Uh, because, for example, you have trees that could be 3,000 years old. Uh, very huge, huge trees. Um, and, and in terms of fungi, of mushrooms, that is, that is what I study, they have a huge diversity in mushrooms. So you can go now in the autumn, in fall, uh, in this region where the leaves, where the leaves of the trees fall, uh, and have hundreds and hundreds of, of mushroom species. Uh, and I like also the Patagonian uh, savanna that is quite different, but over there you can drive for hours and it's very uh, quiet and with almost no people. Uh, so it's a very nice place to be. It's similar to, to, the, to the Brazilian Pampa actually, no, no, not that different. Oh yeah, are you, are you talking about the African savanna? No, the, the Argentina and Savannah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Because you can drive for hours and no people. Isabella? What are your plans for the future? Mm, can you repeat? What are your plans for the future? Ah, my plans for the future. Um, well, now I have a postdoctoral position. It means this means uh, that until 2022, I have a secure job, and there I have to look for a professor position. So that's basically what I want to do, being a proper professor at the university. And I like teaching, I like teaching a lot. Uh, but of course I like research a lot as well. So yeah, that's, that's basically. Very good. So he's doing post-doctorate on the Thank you. Thank you. How was the science for 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 how was the science for how was the science for for how how what I'm sorry how was the soil how was the science for for ah how was the soil format yeah this is like a very question. Yeah, this is a good question as well. Uh, the soil forms by two by two processes. One process, one the first process is the degradation of the rocks that are beneath the soil. So the rocks, uh, by chemical and physical and biological forces, these rocks, these huge rocks, become smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is the mineral component of, of the soil. And the second process is that once you have uh, trees or, or, or plants, and once you have uh, animals and fungi and bacteria living in these minerals that are degraded, they start to form uh, organic matter. Uh, so organic matter basically is all the uh, living and dead uh, material of, of animals and plants and, and microorganisms. So these two processes combine it. The, 
degradation, the degradation of the minerals and, and the things that are dying are, and being decomposed is what forms the soil. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. These two boxes that form the soil. Don't they keep all those bubbles we made at heights? Because all the glass forms are washes. Sometimes we don't see. Destroying the whole thing. Don't be nervous. And the organic part that forms the soil for plantation is the rest of the trees, plants, and animals. Uh, what do you least like in your job? What do I like the least? Yes. You, know? you have said that. Uh, What's your uh, least favorite part? Yes, my least favorite thing is uh, administrative work and bureaucratic work, um, meaning having to. For example, having to call a chemical provider to to buy something for the laboratory, or having to do all kinds of uh, bureaucracy and, and and office uh, work with authorities and with the university. This is what I like the least. Yeah, thank you. Very good, excellent answer. So he doesn't like the bureaucratic job. Me neither. I like to teach, but I don't like the administrative part of this. Go ahead. Good. And how were the soil layers discovered? Yeah, it's like what kind of equipment? Did you, did you use, did the humans use to discover that uh, the, the different layers of soil? Because mm -hmm. probably deep down on the ground you didn't dig, right? It's only through some equipment, so that was the question. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand the, the, the original question. Can, can you repeat? Ah, how were the soil layers discovered? Yes, yes. Like, did you use any different uh, scientific equipment to discover different layers? Uh, at first, this was a very empirical work, uh, meaning just if, if, you, if you compare many soils and you dig holes in the soil and you dig a good hole, <laughs> you can start to see these different layers uh, and the most the most important thing about the layers is that you can extract the soil from each different at first the first thing is to see the layers in in just with the eye with the naked eye and then you take samples of the different layers and analyze them, analyze uh, uh, the, the chemical composition. So you see that in a few centimeters, there is a lot of changes. For example, the organic, the organic layer has way more carbon and way more phosphorus than the mineral layer. Um, and and this, this process, the description or, or the taxonomy of the layers, came because many people, many experts uh, try to uh, make, uh, they, they try to, they try to make a consensus, a scientific consensus uh, on how to name these layers and how to, which, which names these layers will, will have. And this is actually based on international uh, law. Uh, by the United Nations. So, yeah, that's the answer. Very good. Okay. So, uh, only in the majority of the cases, the students saw the scenarios of this process, empirical theory, empirical, involving testing, involving experiment, empirical. 
não quer pegar camadas diferentes mesmo e analisar o laboratório para ver o que ele tem ali dentro. Por exemplo, tem muito, muita matéria orgânica, né? Não vai ter tanto mineral e espécie. E aí são as cientistas do mundo do mundo que definiram nome para cada tipo de camada de sol diferente. Very good. Thank you very much. Do we have more questions? More questions? My question is, what are your plans for the future? My question is, what are the main subjects you always already? already? The main subjects uh, that I am studying. Yes, that's right. Uh, well, now is mycorrhizal fungi, uh, also the relationship between between soil biodiversity, meaning meaning the biodiversity of different uh, groups of organisms in the soil, like fungi, like bacteria, like archaea, like, like insects, with the soils, the, the, I'm sorry, the functions, the ecosystem functions that the soil has. So since like some 20 years ago, there is this whole concept of ecosystem services. So for example, the soil uh, absorbs uh, uh, carbon dioxide, that is the main cause of, of, uh, of climate change. Uh, also, the soil is a storage of water. So all, all of these are ecosystem functions provided by soil. Uh, so I want to see the relationship between these, these functions that the, the soil provides to humans and to nature in general, uh, and how this is related to, to biodiversity, so to, to different measures of biodiversity in soil. Um, I also applied, I also applied uh, mycorrhizal fungi to agronomy to, to increase the growth of, of crops as maize, as uh, uh, wheat, as uh, rice. Um, yeah, so that's basically what, what I study at the moment. Yes. Have you got any help from our relative? Uh, did I go? Yes, help from, from my mom, basically. Uh, uh, she helped me in the, in the beginning of my career. Uh, when I was a, a bachelor student, of course. Uh, but since I am doing the PhD, it's basically all by myself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Do you have any more questions? Yeah. Uh -huh. What? 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 In one hand, I will say that uh, in 2014, I developed a method to grow mice or corn, the, the corn, the mice that, that we all eat. Uh, so I developed a method to grow uh, the mice uh, in an spatial pattern, meaning, meaning the distance between the different plants and the rows of the of the of the of the mice in which uh, 
these distance will shade the wheat because in, in maize, in mice, uh, wheat is a huge problem, meaning uh, plants that are not good for the for the for the crop. Uh, so with this method, we grow, we increase the production like in seventy percent. Wow. And we reduce the the wheat uh, population like in ninety percent. Uh, so this is what I have had most impact at the moment uh, since five years ago. Yeah. That's amazing. That is Uh, when did you start your career? Kind of question. When? Uh, since five years ago. Yeah. Only five? No, but when did you yeah. start studying biology? Well, I studied in biology since 2008. 2008? Uh, that's 11, but uh, I started doing research uh, since 2014. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Do you have any questions? No? Do you have more questions? So, I would have the last question for you. Uh, we have here some students that are only discovering now what there is to research and to do in their lives in their future. Do you have any messages to the young people today, like the teenagers that are growing? Maybe it can be related to your job or to science or to life itself. What would you say to these young people? Yes, uh, well, my first advice is kind of a, a, a cliche advice, but I, I, I think that uh, one needs to study what, what is the passion and one, what, the thing that we like the most and the thing that every individual likes the most. Sometimes teenage, teenagers and, and young people have a difficult time to finding out what they liked. So a method that I used was to, to first thinking what I didn't like. So for example, I know that I didn't want to be a, a doctor. So many people was pressured me to, to be in, in the medicine world, but I, I didn't want to, to do this. So yeah, that's the first thing, like to try to, to find out what do you like and what you, what you don't like. Um, because I, I don't think that, well, as a scientist, of course, I would like that more people will be in science because there are very few of us, but maybe not all people uh, has the, likes this, uh, likes this profession. So that's not the issue. The issue is like to really find out what they like. And, and the second issue is to, is to be independent. It, it is, is difficult at, at, at first. When, when I was 17, I, I left out my, my home 
eh, to live alone in another city, in a big city in Bogota. Eh, so I had a lot of difficult times, but this is very helpful to, to gain experience. Eh, and also something that I mentioned earlier that eh, you want, at least in my personal opinion, uh, you want a good life, but you, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to have a lot of money because that, that is a, it's a distraction uh, for, for the things that, that you, that you want, really want to do. And the final thing will be to, uh, if you are an extrovert or an introvert person, person Either way, if you are doing something that you like, you will find a lot of friends and, and this uh, extended family outside your own family uh, that will have a, a good impact. So I have been lucky to, to find a lot of scientists that like the same things that I like and a lot of advisors, uh, more, more older people that also like what I like and that had, had a similar um, ethic and a similar uh, philosophy or, or, of research. So, yeah, that, that's it. And, and, and of course, discipline and being honest and, and all these basic things are, are a, a, a must have. You must have all of this. Yeah. Very nice. That's excellent. Can we take a, uh, can you gather to take a picture with you on screen? Of course, of course. Okay, let me put it Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. I, I, no. I went out for some no, reason. Sorry. Just have to, yes. Now. Right. So is everybody there? Can they follow? Okay, three, two, one, say cheese. Yeah. One, one more time, one moment. Okay, one moment. Okay, three, two, one, say cheese. Look here, look here. Okay, that was great. 